start. And start. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and do the formalities and get those out of the way. We'll brush those through, through those quick. Uh, good morning. Welcome to MGCU Academy and MGCU Academy Online and, of course, Balance University. And the goals of Balance University are to keep you strong, mobile, and independent for as long as possible. Uh, general safety, make sure you have a chair. Make sure you have something stable to hold on to. We, want, we don't want anyone to fall. Uh, remember to breathe. There's certain times I'll instruct you to breathe a certain way. If not, just breathe normal. Don't hold your breath, okay? You don't want to hold your breath. Uh, Balance University is built on the four pillars of balance, right? Strength, posture, flexibility, and then, of course, balance. We'll do two exercises per pillar. Of course, you guys know all this by now. And then in the balance pillar, we'll do four, okay? And then we'll take questions at the end of each pillar. And, of course, at the end of class, if you would like to talk one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we'll handle online. We'll, we'll unmute your mic, and you and I'll talk. And then here, if you have any questions... We'll, we'll address those two after class if you want to speak one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, I think that's it, man. We're going to zip through any questions over last week. Yeah, everybody practice? Mm -hmm. Everyone practice? Really? Good. The pool is good not to hold on. Yeah? It's very hard. Yeah. But I got it by doing this. Good. And it's strong. So there's two non-load uh, bearing exercises considered. Uh, there's two non-load bearing exercises uh, in the world that exist, right? Swimming and cycling. And what, ironically, both of those are wonderful resistance training exercises. Doesn't mean they're bad, it's just a different category, right? And, and, and I wanna be very clear when I say that. Swimming is excellent because there's, there's resistance all around you, right? And then for those that may have spinal issues or may have balance problems, the pool can be a great way because you have a bit of buoyancy. It takes a little bit of weight off of those joints, you know, especially if you have some arthritis uh, that can be painful when you walk. Swimming pools are a great way to mitigate some of that pain. So, all right. Moving in, speaking of pain, I'm going to shoot down a list, and I want you to just listen. You don't have to raise your hand, but just listen to see if you recognize anything on this list, okay? We're talking about medications. If you're taking anything for Alzheimer's, anemia, cardiac arrhythmias, depression, heart failure, hypoglycemia, not, not hyper, not diabetes, hypoglycemia, uh, lower extremity edema, you know, the feet swelling, the ankle swelling, orthostatic hypotension, we just talked about that last week, the postural hypertension, Parkinson's disease and related disorders, peripheral neuropathy, seizures, spinal stenosis, <laughs> thyroid disorders, vertigo, and vitamin D deficiency. All of those are attributed to falls. Vitamin D. Vitamin D is an interesting one because in recent research, going back maybe as far as seven, eight years ago, vitamin D has been shown in research to decrease the risk of falls. And what you're looking for is a high dose, right? Anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 IUs. Coincidentally, early on in this pandemic, there was research that came out of Switzerland, I think in France, I'm sorry, France, that showed us that vitamin D was helping not only reduce falls, but fight some of the impacts of COVID. It was helping fight some of the inflammation the, the, in the lungs that COVID was causing. Well, we did a video, of course it, it gets taken down, and now it's back up. You know, there was a lot of uh, people trying to figure out what's going on, that's what it was. But, but vitamin D can definitely help you fight the inflammation of COVID. And I was telling all of my clients, all of my patients, I was telling every one of them, hit the vitamin D. If you can, talk to your doctor, hit the vitamin D, hit it hard, you know. So that list was something that usually everyone here has something attributed or, or, or related to or can associate with on that list. That list, a lot of those medications that treat those issues have a high risk of falls higher than normal, all right? 
Falls are the leading cause of injury and death among older adults and a significant public health issue. Falls affect one in three adults over the age of 65 annually. 50% of adults over the age of 80. That's a high number. 50% of adults over the age of 80 will be affected by falls. 20 to 30% of these patients will suffer moderate to severe injuries interfering with their ability to continue living in the community or a CCRC, Community uh, Continuing Care Retirement Community, and require hospitalization and have an increased risk of death. There's a great interview with Dr. Khan on uh, the YouTube channel that we talk about. Studies were showing us that uh, anywhere from two to five years, people were passing away after, after a significant fall. Dr. Khan said what he sees in his practices is if you have a significant fall, you fall and break a bone, break a hip, most of his patients are dying within three to six months. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was, I was surprised by that number. And, and that's, that was coming straight from Dr. Khan. Yeah. Because they're laying in bed so long? You, you know what happens? It's a snowball effect. When you fall, you lose confidence. Okay? Now, here's what happens. And then you get embarrassed. And, so what, and then you do your rehab. So you almost become overcautious. A lot of people withdraw. They, they no longer do certain exercises or movements. They no longer go and frequent certain or, or their, their favorite restaurants or their social events because they don't want to embarrass themselves or they don't want to fall. Okay, and so what happens is, is it turns into this huge snowball effect where you're not moving as much, exactly, and then depression sets in. And you remember what we talked about BDNF, the socialization and the exercise being novel events? It's so important to socialize because of the impacts it has, it has on our brains. And we were talking this morning about the point of no return with balance, right? If we're leaning to one side and those signals, they may get to our brain, but because as we get older, the synapses in our brains get further apart, right? Sometimes the information doesn't get unpacked and analyzed fast enough to send signals back to those muscles for us to catch ourselves. And we pass that point of no return and we go into a fall. Does that make sense? So here's the deal. We're talking, according to the center, the CDC, falls are the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries in older adults. One in four Americans, 65 and older, will experience a fall. Prevention efforts tend to focus on minimizing environmental hazards, right? Like picking up things, make sure you light the way, uh, and improving mobility, what we're doing here. But another important contributing factor that is overlooked is prescription and over-the-counter medications. Of 20 medications that are frequently prescribed to older adults, researchers at the Karolinska Institute, now this is in Sweden, this is a research study done in Sweden, found that over half of these may increase fall injury risk. So that list that I just read off, research is telling us that over half of those are increasing our risk for a fall. Polypharmacy, that's what we're talking about, taking more than two or three medications, typically three medications at a time, consumed by a person. Oftentimes, multiple medications are in the same class, and they're used to treat chronic issues. Um, so, you know, the risk associated with polypharmacy can lead to increased adverse effects, falls, and decreased medication compliance. The more medications, the more things you have to keep up with, the harder it is to keep up with, right? <laughs> so... We're going to zip through here. Guys, uh, again, all this research, all my sources are available on the website. You can go in, you can download it, print it out, go through it yourself. There's another list here, things like um, uh, drugs to, to treat peptic ulcers, uh, NSAIDs like Advil. Uh, uh, you've got constipation drugs, calcium supplements, opiates, antidepressants, thyroids. Here's something that, that is really fascinating. Now, why, why is the medication such an issue? Elderly people are often on a variety of medications like we just talked about, right? And this suggests a causative relation between the use of medicines and falls. This is coming out of the Journal of Medicine in the Netherlands. Uh, they tend to be more on the front of preventative care, where we're in the, in the West, we're more in, in the field of you're sick, now let's treat you, versus let's treat you before you get sick. So this is what this study finds, and I'm not going to bore you too much longer. We're going to zip through this. Elderly people that are 65 and older who live in the community, the risk of falling varies from 25 to 40%. If you're institutionalized, if you're in long-term memory care, all right, that risk goes up to 70%. 
The incidence of palsy increases with age and is greater in women. At least 5% of community dwelling adults that are 65 and older, older will suffer a fracture related to a fall, especially fractures in the hips that result in hospital admission. Now listen to this. If you're admitted into a hospital with a significant fall or hip fracture, the death rate within the following year of tw is up to 20 to 30 percent. 20 to 30 percent. So we definitely want to stay out of the hospital. The same percentage of elderly people admitted to nursing home because of this disability. So if, if you know you don't pass away, you're admitted to a nursing home, and we know the stats when you go into the nursing home, right? It's pretty incredible. Okay, last deal. You've hung in there this long. Let's why why the medications are such a problem. In the in in the older adults, the rate of absorption of drugs. Now remember, this is from the Journal of Medicine, right? This this research is from from the Netherlands that was done. The rate of absorption of most drugs administered orally is almost identical to that of younger people. But with aging, marked changes in body components affect the distribution. What happens when we get older? What changes happen, right? Things tend to drop. Mm -hmm. We tend to add a little more fat. We tend to lose lean muscle tissue. How does that affect absorption and distribution as when compared to when we were 30, 40, 50? Body fat as a proportion to body weight increases by over 35% from the age of 20 to 70. There is a concurrent decrease in plasma volume of 8% with normal aging. Lean body mass and total body water decreases. We talk about hydration. How many of you drink at least two of these bottles of water a day? Fabulous. Fabulous. Well done. Kudos to you. Bonus points. All right. So now... We're talking about the decrease in blood plasma, right, and hydration, lean body mass, water decreases approximately 17% as we age and we move through those years 20 to 70. Now, the increase of adverse effects due to the body fat increase, right, you have certain medications that are what's called lipophilic, which means it needs fat to absorb, right? Vitamins D, E, A, and K, are fat soluble vitamins. It means they use, you know, they, they absorb with fat, in fat. And then you have hydrophilic medications which use water. Those specific medications need a high plasma concentration. As we age, the plasma concentration goes down. So the point I'm making here is that as we age, sometimes the dosages that we would take when we're 20, 30, 40 are extremely different than what we would take when we're 70, 80, 90. And your doctors have to be aware of that. And if you need to call them out on that, you do that. I cannot stress to you enough, be your own advocate, okay? I want you to go through this. There's a lot more here. I'm not going to do it. We've taken up enough time. But I want to make sure that we're educated on things that are pertinent to our specific community, okay, our aging population. Check this out. There is a list there that I've uploaded on the website. Go in there, download it, look for medications in falls. That's what it'll be under, medications and falls. There will be two headings, all right? Um, actually, I'll combine the two and make it simple, all right? So you can just go look at medications and falls, and you will find the Netherlands study, okay? Now, it's a bunch of jarble, and so I've kind of combed it down. Remember, my, my degree is in dietetics, so I kind of, this medical speak, I was in heaven listening and, and writing it all down, but it's, it's definitely plain enough that you can understand it, all right? So with that, let's get going. Let's have you stand. Let's get behind our chairs. All right. Week 84. Week 84 is sent and on its way to your emails with descriptions in tow. All right. I'm just going to turn my chair here. Uh, so you guys can hear me okay, right? You hear me? I'm talking really, really loud, so I'm going to bring my volume down a little bit. All right, if you can't hear me, let me know. All right, we're going to start with our feet hip width apart, knees slightly bent, nice and tall. Holding on to that chair, I want you to close your eyes. All right, close your eyes. Get your bearings. Okay, eyes closed. Once you get your eyes closed, if you feel comfortable and confident, raise that hand up off that chair, but I want you to be safe. All right, I want everyone to be safe. Good. 
Very good. And three, two, one, and time. Eyes open. Now we're going to move our feet close together. Get them as close together as you can. Bend your knees, core tight, shoulders back. Again, eyes closed. Hold it onto that chair. Okay. Get your bearings. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and lift that hand off that chair. Eyes closed. 15 seconds. Be safe. And four, three, two, one, and time. Eyes open. Now we're going to stand on our on one foot, okay? Let's go ahead and move our chairs to the right side. Let's move it to the right. Okay, we're going to be on our, our uh, right foot. All right? Eyes open the first time. Let's shift our body weight to our right foot. Bend your knee. Find your focal points. Find something in front of you. Stare at it and focus. Shoulders back. Time begins now. Good, good. Use that chair as needed. Maybe you're using one or two fingers, maybe three. That's it. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Now we're going to do this with our eyes closed, okay? Listen to the verbal cues. Let's shift our weight to our right foot. Let's lift our right heel into the air. Just the right heel, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, left heel. We're on our right foot, left heel is in the air. <laughs> Eyes closed. Get your bearings. If you're swaying like a tree, you want to stay here, okay? If you feel comfortable and confident, let's lift that foot up in the air. Just keep it maybe an inch or so off the ground. Stay close to that ground. Good. Time's has begun. That's it. Be safe. Well done. And three, two, one, time. Good. Let's flip our chairs to the other side. Great job. Same thing. Same thing. First time is eyes open. We're going to stand on one foot, all right? Nice and tall, core tight, left knee slightly bent. We're going to shift our body weight to our left foot. Right foot up in the air. Bend that knee. Find your focal point. 15 seconds begins now. That's it. Very good. Eyes open, finding that focal point. And three, two, one, time. Good, good, good. All right, now we're going to close our eyes, okay? Remember the process. Shift our weight to our left foot. Right heel in the air. Bend that knee. Close your eyes. Get your bearings. If you feel comfortable and confident, let's lift that right foot just an inch off the ground. Time begins now. Just an inch. That's it. Be safe. Good, good. And five, four, three, two, one, and time. Good, good, good. Go ahead and grab a shot of water. Let's get back into our chairs. Good, grab a shot of water. You're going to square your chair back up. All right. Week 84. Great news. Have any of you heard of physical therapy and balance centers? They are a chain of physical therapy uh, centers across the country. I think they have over 300 locations. I was contacted yesterday or uh, the day before by a physical therapy and balance center in Rockville, Maryland that wants to implement Balance University into their therapy, into their programs. That's great news. That's it. And it also looks like we'll be back in Florida Blue any time now. And so what we've done is we've actually become a vendor, which was a bit of a process. So now Balance University is available to every Blue Cross Blue Shield affiliate in the country. So we'll be able to send Balance University books and the program to each one of these affiliates as needed. So things are, things are moving, buddy. We're trucking along. <laughs> if you see me balding, Ignore it. Please do me a favor and lie to me. 
just say everything's going to be okay because <laughs> we definitely are burning the candle at both ends right now. So first thing, any questions over week 83? Anything there? Everybody got it okay? Descriptions help? Yes. Descriptions are helping? Okay, good, good. Um, if, if What we may do is I, I'm going to try to find a way if description are helping. We'll see if we can can get maybe a flexibility or something in there too. So we'll try to find carve out some time and, and build on that. Um, and it seems to be a positive response to that. So we definitely want to go down that road. So anything we can do to help. Here we go. We're going to be nice and tall. I want to sit at the edge of my chair. All right. My feet are about as wide as the chairs as the legs on the chair. It's okay to hold on. What we're going to do is heel slides with an abduction and adduction, okay? So we're going to slide our feet out. We're going to come up. We're going to go out, in, down, and in, right? Very similar to last week. Up. Good. And three. And four. And up. Good. That's it. And five. Up, out, in, down. Good. And six. In, 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 in. Well done. And seven. Good. And eight. Good. Two more. Nine. Last one, 10. Well done, okay? Everybody catch your breath. We'll stand, we'll stand, okay. First thing we're gonna do, let me demonstrate, okay? And then you guys can follow. We're gonna start, at, and you guys know this, I love the eccentric quad activity is sitting slow. The reason I like that exercise so much is because you get the most bang for your buck. Research tells us that it's not bench press, right? You see those guys on bench press and they're doing all that weight and they're pushing up and they go up really slowly. If they would flip that around and go down slowly, they actually would activate more muscle tissue. It would be better for them. So for us, we're going to sit down slowly, all right? We're going to avoid the plop. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to sit down nice and slow, okay? Just hang there. We're going to come up. We're going to bring both knees up at the same time. Anybody catch that? No. Both <laughs> knees up at the same time? <laughs> Let's do one knee up at the same time. <laughs> Just trying to wake everybody up this morning. <laughs> All right. I think everybody was trying to process, what did, what did he just say? <laughs> All right. Let's start. Feet hip width apart. Okay, we're going to sit down. Four seconds. Here we go. Four, three, stick your bottom out. Two, nice and slow, and one. Okay, we're going to come up, and we're going to lift our right leg into the air. So we're up, shift your weight, lift, and down. Okay, now okay. back down. We're going to go down. Three, two, one, and we're up. Now let's do the left leg. Shift, lift. And down. That's okay. Yeah. Good. And down. Four. Nice and slow. Three. Two. One. Good. And we're up. Right leg. Shift. Lift. Down. Beautiful. And down. Four. Three. Two. And one. Good. And we're up. Shift. Left leg. Lift. Good. And down. Four. Three, two, nice and slow, one, and we're up. Right leg, so we're going to shift, lift, down, beautiful, and down. Four, three, two, and one, and we're up. Left leg, shift, lift, and down. Four, last round, three, two, and one, good, and we're up, right leg, shift, lift, and down, and down, slow, four, three, two, and one, and we're up, left leg, shift, lift, 
and down and rest. Good, good. Go ahead and have a seat. Catch your breath. All right. Think about how you can get both of those knees up at the same time. <laughs> good, good. All right. Here we go. Back to the edge of our chair, okay? It's okay if you hold on, so grab under your chair. You're nice and tall. Your core's tight. We're going to slide our feet out. We're going to go up, out, in, down, and in. Out, up, out, in, down, and in. Good. You really rely a lot on your core here. Up, up, out, in, down, and in. Good. Out, up, out, in, down, and in. Beautiful. Out, up, out, in, down, and in. Two more. Out, up, out, in, down, and in. Last time. Good. Up, out, in, down, and in. You feel those muscles working? Yeah, yeah they're light. Good. That's good. What that means is that means those muscles that you feel burning, they are reaching their limits. And so what they're going to do is they're going to rec recruit more muscle tissue. And the more muscle tissue they recruit, the more of a synergy, the more muscle tissues in that synergy. The more we can recruit to the synergy, the more hands on deck we have to help us whenever we go for a fall, right? We'll do an exercise today that's called, um, I think they're calling it I almost fell but didn't. And, it, and it's really what it is. It's like, I'm going to fall. No, I'm not. And so they actually say this out loud. I've seen, I've seen a class do this. Yeah, and I thought it was fabulous. I thought it was great. So I'm not, listen, I am not opposed to stealing. And I know people take my stuff. There's more than enough to go around. So, all right. So next thing we do, let's stand, okay? We'll come back to that one. We're going to stand here. Great, great exercise, okay? Nice and tall. This is our sitting slow with our hip and knee flexion. If for some reason you have an injury in the hip or, or some kind of decreased mobility, don't feel like you have to get your knee all the way up in the air, all right? Do, give me what you got and then right back down, okay? What I'm looking for is control and stability, okay? Nice and tall. You can use your hands if you would like to help guide yourself to the chair. Four seconds on the way down. Ready? And four, three, two. Stick that bottom out. One. Good. And we're down. We're going to come up. We're going to right leg. So shift. Right leg in the air. Lift. And down. Good. And four, three, two, one. And we're up. Shift. Left leg. Lift. Up. And down. Four. Three, two, one, and we're up. Right leg in the air, shift, lift, excuse me, and down, and four, three, two, one, and we're up. Shift two, left leg coming up, up, down, good, and down, four, three, two, one. And we're up, right leg coming up, shift your weight, lift, and down, and down, four, three, two, one, last round, we're up, left leg, shift, lift, and down, and rest, good, everyone down, great job, well done, catch your breath, that is our strength pillar, any questions? Any questions over our strength pillar? We're going to take a little 20 second break here. Okay. Now our off script exercise is going to be that I'm going to fall. No, I'm not. So let me explain why you catch your breath. Let me go through the details of this movement, okay? We're going to stand and what we're going to do when we stand, you guys just relax right now. When we stand, I want to put the chair on the left side, okay? And so what we'll do is we're going to stand with our feet hip apart. First phase. Step almost into a lunge, right? 
Now, here's what I want to warn you about. Be careful not to go too far and overextend yourself. So let me offer this suggestion. Start small. Start short. Okay, that felt good. Let me go a little bit more. Okay, that felt good. Let me go a little bit more. Oh, that's probably about all I got. Okay, so let's discover our threshold that way rather than overextending ourselves first and getting ourselves in trouble. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So again, let me do that again. We'll go short. Okay, that's fine. If that's, if that's it, then that's where you stay, right? And what I mean by that's it is that all your body weight is on that front leg or probably 80%. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of work for that leg, right? So if you feel yourself giving out, that leg giving out, you know you've gone too far, okay? That's what we're looking for, okay? <clears throat> Let's have everyone stand. <clears throat> Let's move our chairs to the left side. <clears throat> this is an off-script exercise. <clears throat> So when you get this on your sheet, it's going to say off script, split squat, also a lunge. Mm -hmm. I know that's a lot. But this is not one of our highlighted exercises today either. So this is just bonus, okay? So let's take our left foot and let's break this down in phases. Ready? We're going to step forward with our left foot. Ready? And go. I'm going to fall a little. Now push back. Good. Again, a little bit further if you can. Shoulders, push back. There you go. You've got your chair there if you need it. Here we go again. Lean forward and push back. Good. Now, when you push back, push on your heel, not the ball of your feet. From this position, push off the heel. Good. Step and push. And step. And push. Good. You see how I'm leaning forward there? I've got my body forward. And push. Good. Now my heel is going to stay in contact with the ground throughout the entire movement. Good. I don't want my knee to exceed my toes by too much. It's okay if it's a little bit, but not a whole lot. Last one. And push. Good. Let's switch our chairs. So let me give you a lateral view here. What I mean is I don't want to get so far forward. You see my heel coming off the ground? Look how far my knee is over my, look how far my knee exceeds my toes. So what I need to do is shift my rear end. By shifting my rear end, now my, my, my knee comes back in alignment with my toe, but my shoulders and nose and head can still stay forward. And so now when I push back, I'm pushing off my heel. Okay? We're going to do that to take a lot of tension and pressure off those ligaments, tendons and ligaments in the knee and in the ankle. Okay, Nice and tall, stepping forward with the right foot. Okay, Remember your process. Okay, We're going to step and push off that heel. Good. And step and push. And three. Good. And four. That's it. And five, good. And six, well done. And seven, last one. And eight, and rest. Great job, well done. While I've got you here, we're gonna start we're going to move in. Any questions over the strength pillar? Over the exercise we've just done, any questions? Okay, so let's just move right into the posture pillar because we're going to be standing in the posture pillar too. If anyone gets tired, feel free to have a seat. Okay, take a break. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our feet together. Now, this seems easy, but it can be a little tricky for some. All right, let me demonstrate and you follow. We're going to step forward with our right foot into our position of confidence. Remember that? Our balanced position of confidence. You're going to take your hands. You're going to push out, in, and push back. So one, two, three, four. One. Oh, you're supposed to be switching legs? Two, no, ma'am. Two, three, and four. Keep the right leg every time. There you go. Good. Push, push, stretch that chest out, good, and push back. 
Sometimes you can step too far, right? You feel that? Yeah, so cut your distance. That's it. There you go. Good. And push. Let's slow it down a little bit. So step, open, close, and push back. Well done. And step, open, close, and push back. One more time. Step, open, and close, and push back. Good. Let's switch our chair to the other side. Well done. Now with our left foot, okay, same thing, all right? I know your shoulders are going to get what I call a little spicy, but that's good, right? That'll give you something tomorrow when you wake up and your shoulders are sore. I want you to think about one thing. I want you to think about me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I want you to think about all that muscle that you've built today, right? Nice and tall, feet together. Okay, ready? Let's hands up in front of us. We're going to step with the left foot. We're going to open, palms to the sky, close, push back. One, two, three, four. One, two, push, three, four. One, two, good, three, and four. One, two, good. Three and four. One, two, three. Good job. And four. And last time. One, two, three, and four. And rest. So, a lot of folks really, really don't realize how much uh, different it is to start in the balanced position of confidence versus stepping into the balanced position of confidence and then doing the reverse shoulder shrink. There's a lot of moving parts there. What's happening is the brain is having to diagnose and then give a prognosis, right? The brain is having to analyze what's going on and then send signals back to all these different areas. Well, that's a very similar to walking and talking and having to observe possible tripping hazards, right? There's a lot going on there. For some of us, there's a lot more than others. For some of us, there's a lot less. <laughs> so we're trying to just imitate those real life uh, situations that we'll encounter, okay? So keeping the chair right where it's at, we're gonna go into, okay. How many of you have a broomstick laying around the house that doesn't have, that you can twist or off? Okay, this is one of our highlighted exercises. Now I understand not everyone is, is, is like, like me and they have a broomstick specifically for this. But if you don't know, you can twist a lot of times, you can twist your broom handle off, right? If you don't have a broom handle, you can use a band, really any old stick, okay? But what we're going to do here in class is we're going to imagine that we have that broom stick and we're going to hold it right here in front of us, okay? Now from in front of us, I want to move my feet so my feet are about hip width apart, all right? Let's take that broom stick over our head. Now, how far back can you get that broomstick, right, without leaning back? Just your arms go back. Now, do you notice, does your head jump forward? All right, if it does, I want you to move your head back. In this position, I want you to stick your bottom out. All right, now as you stick your bottom out, you're going to, oh, back is going to arch, but I still want you to push back here. We're going to go down. Now, we're going to let that broomstick come down here, balance. And we're going to come right back up over the head. That's it. And we're going to come up, push on your heels. Good. And we're down. Shift that weight. We're going to go down, up, push it back, and up. Good. And down. Extend those arms. That's it. We're going to go down with the broomstick. Keep your chest up. And up. And up. Good. Imagine you have a headlight in your chest. Illuminate what's in front of you. And down, down, that's it. And up, push, push, and up, last time. Down, stick that bottom out. Down, and up, and up, and rest. Take, catch your breath, take a break. Great job. So essentially what I've done is I've hidden 
the founders exercise inside that movement by bringing our hands down it's just more uh, movement for our brain to calculate right not only that but it changes our balance center of mass if we have a, a, a load above us right just our arms not a heavy load but as our arms that load moves in front of us what does that do to my balance center of mass it changes as it goes down now it's underneath us it changes again so as our hands are moving our brain is constantly communicating with all the muscles from the ears to the toes trying to keep us in a position where our balance center of mass is supposed to be to keep us erect and keep us from falling. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, get a shot of water if you need it. I'm going to make a quick note, and we're going to go back to our step and reverse shoulder swings. Okay. Okay, here we go. Since our chair is already on the left side, we'll keep it there, okay? <clears throat> our feet are going to be close together, nice and tall. Our hands are out in front of us. Pinky's touching. Okay, remember, we're going to step, open, close, push back. Stepping with our left foot. Step, <laughs> open, close, and push back. Good. And step, open, close, and push. Good. And step, get control, open, close, and push. Well done. And step, open, close, and push. Now, when you step, split your weight evenly, all right? Step, your weight should be split evenly, 50-50. Left foot, open, Close and push back. Last one. Left foot. Here we go. Step. Open. Push. Close. And rest. Good. Catch your breath. Let's rotate our chair. Great job. Well done. Same thing. We'll just be stepping with the right foot. Now, if you notice, if you start to have some pain or your shoulders are getting a little tender, a little tired, instead of extending your arms all the way out, bring them in. Right? Cut the load in half. It's all about leverage, okay? So just bring your arms in, and you can keep your elbows at your side and just open and close, okay? All right, here we go. Feet together. We're going to be stepping with our right foot. Remember, our weight is split 50-50. Our hands up in front of us. Stepping with the right foot. Control. Now we move. <laughs> just, just say it's a dance move. <laughs> Step. Open. Close and push. Good. And step. Control. Open. Well done. Close and push. Step. Open. Close and push. Remember, try to touch those pinkies. Step. Push. Stretch it. Close. Good. Two more. Step. Open. Close. Push back. Last one. Step. Open. Close. And rest. But you were right about the extension. Yeah. If I go less, I have more control. Right. Right. So, so the further out you are, the less stability you have. Right. So if you find that being an issue, start small. Small. And then work yourself to big. Yeah. Good job. All right. Now, big smiles. We're going to be doing the broomstick exercise one more time. All right. We're going to try to do five. All right. So we're going to start our feet hip width apart. Again, all these exercises, these two exercises that we're doing, right, right foot, uh, left foot and right foot, and now this broomstick exercise is for our posture, right? You feel your shoulders. We're building that muscle back there to pull our shoulders back to act as anchors, okay? So we're going to start our feet are hip width apart. Grab your broomstick, okay? Grab your broomstick down to your side. Okay, we're going to lift our broomstick over our head. Push back. Remember, try not to allow your head to jut forward. Stick our bottom out. Arch your back and descend. Good. And hold that position, pushing back. Broomstick comes down. Broomstick goes up. And now we go up. Awesome. Good. And down, bottom out. Push back. 
down, your weight should be on your heels. Up and up. Good, good. Three more. And down and down. That's it. And up and up. Good. Two more. And down. Stick that bottom out. And down. Nice and smooth. And up and up. Last time. Down and down and up and up. Good, good. Relax, have a seat. <laughs> Great job. Great job. Water, water, water. Grab, get a shot of water. Awesome. So yeah, one of the stats we always talk about is death rates and from falls. Oh, death rates from fall, here's one from the CDC. Death rates from falls have increased about 70, having, I'm sorry, death rates from falls have increased about 30% in the last decade. Healthcare costs are also on the rise. You guys have heard me talk about this. In one year alone, medical costs for falls are about $50 billion. Do you know who bears two thirds of those costs? Medicare. 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 Mm -hmm. And with 10,000 Americans turning 65 every day, we, we need to take more of a preventative approach. You know, and not, not to get too much on my soapbox here, but, but it's hard when there's not any incentives for folks to, to get into exercise classes. I had a professor one time. And um, he was telling me about a class he took years ago, smart guy. And he was telling me this class was a pharmacology class. Now, my, my daughter is a nurse, and, and I watched her go through pharmacology. I've done a little small smidgen of pharmacology, all I had to have. And I can tell you it's not a picnic. So what these, these uh, future physicians are doing is they're learning about medications and they're learning the algorithms, right? That's what being a physician is. If it's not this, it's this. If it's not that, it's this. And so it's just eliminating almost deductive logic until you get to a solution. Well, you have to know, okay, here's the answer. Here's my solution. Now, what medication? And that's what this class was. This class was about learning the medications to match the symptoms or the issues the patient was having. At the end of this class, on the last day, my professor, he was telling me, this, this professor, we'd gone through this class, we'd lost several students, had flunked out. Those that remained were pretty loyal, showed up every day, so the, and had a great respect for this professor. So he stood up on his desk, and he made an announcement. He said, listen, I want to tell all of you one thing, okay? Now, we've all learned about our medications and what they can do and what they can't do and their limitations. But there's actually something I haven't told you. There's one medication that does everything that all these medications that we've talked about and learned about and studied for in class. There's one medication. Prevention. What's that? Prevention. Yeah, well, aspirin. So there's one medication that does everything. That isn't it? Exercise. Oh. oh. Exercise. You know, and, and, and so you look at it. All the way from anxiety and depression and how we've shown that, that exercise is as effective as Zoloft when it comes to treating depression and anxiety, right? Yeah, it, it's pretty fascinating. So if you just take the highlighted exercises and do those, you will not only see an improvement in your balance, but also the mental state too. And if we're not going to get any incentives, <laughs> at some point we have to motivate ourselves or what's going to motivate us right it's got to come from inside you know you got to do something every day so that's my pep talk all right here we go flexibility pillar any questions over the exercises we've just done here no everybody good there good my favorite all right let's start edge of our chairs okay we don't want to go too far we're going to start with our left leg out in front of us our right knee bent Let's take our hands, both hands. We're going to slide down. Yeah, you we're going to slide down and hold. Just going to slide down and hold, stretching the back of that leg. This is good for TV. Yeah, yes, ma'am. This is when you're watching TV, you definitely want to do this one. 
and just hold it. This is great. Five. I can feel it right in the bottom of my spine. Yeah, you just feel, yep, you'll feel it in your lower back, the back of your legs. Ooh. And relax. Good, good. All right, now let's shoot that right leg out in front of us. Awesome. Both hands. Slide down that right leg. Very good. It's okay if your toe points up. It's okay if it points out. That's it. If I guess you had a preference, I would say pull it up. There you go. Boy, that changes things, doesn't it? <laughs> good. And hold. And five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Good. So let's, let's put both feet out in front of us, right? Let's put both legs out in front of us. Maybe a wider base, okay? Maybe just a little wider base. Be careful in your chair. I don't want you to tip over, right? So you may want to slide back just a bit. And we're going to go down with both hands down those legs. That's it. It's okay if your knees are slightly bent. That's okay. Good. And just hold and steady. That's it. Good, good. And five, four, three, two, one, and time. Good. I, I'm telling you, good job. Right <laughs> so go ahead, let's scoot back in our chair. All right, let's stretch our neck out, our self cervical stretch. So let's take our left hand, we're going to grab underneath our chair. Right hand's going across. We're going to lean away from our, our anchor, right? So if the left hand is the anchor, we're going to lean away from it. So whichever hand you have holding, right? If you have your left hand holding, you're leaning to the right. Leaning to the right. I have no sense of direction. That's okay. I got you. Keep your hand the same. And then just look the other way. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get us through. <laughs> Good, in five, four, three, two, one, and relax, good, and now let's rotate. Let's take our right hand, our right hand is going to hold, and we're going to look to the left. Right hand is holding, and we're looking to the left. There you go, and you may want to lean a little bit too. You can really feel that start to pull. <clears throat> Hold steady. Find the place you feel that stretch the most. So it's okay if you look up and look down a little bit. Good. And five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Well done. All right. That is our flexibility pillar. Any questions? A little stretch. If you need it, if you would like, grab a quick shot of water. We're going to go right into our balance pillar, okay? All right. So catch your breath. I'm going to explain as you, while you rest, if you take a little, little break, let me show you what we're going to do right off the bat. Doesn't get easy right off the bat, right? We're going to go for gold here, okay? This is called a single leg balance reach. We're just going to reach out while standing on one leg, okay? Have your chair close. This is a process. I'm going to shift my weight to my left foot, okay? I'm going to slide my right foot back. I'm going to stabilize. I do not want to continue out of this movement until I'm steady. Once I'm steady, I can either reach with one hand while holding the chair, or if I feel confident enough or comfortable from this position, I can reach with two hands. Now, if you really have a lot of confidence, as you get to this position, as the leg comes up, the hands come up, and you can really reach out there and then return to start position. Okay, has everybody got it? All right. <laughs> well, at least we're not standing on our head just yet. <laughs> All right, here we go. Chair on the left side. Nice and tall, I want you to find your focal point. Okay, nice and tall, core tight, knee slightly bent. Let's slide our right foot back. Find your balance, get control. Whenever you're ready, you don't have to go with me. When you're ready, we're gonna reach out. Hold, three, two, one, and down. 
So we're sliding, get control, and arm and leg come up and down. That's close. And slide, get control, and up and down. Good, good, good. Even if you have to maybe do one or two fingers there. Up and down. Good, good, good. And slide and up and down. Good. <laughs> and out and up, out and down. Good. Last time. And slide, bend that knee. And down, good, good, good. Everybody in class online, well done. Let's rotate, you did it. That's pretty good. Okay, here we go, same thing, all right, same thing. This time we're standing on our right foot, so make sure that right knee's bent. Slide that left foot back, get control, and then we're up. And down, good, good, good. Up and down. Keep trying. And we're back and up and down. Perfect. And slide control. Up and down. Fantastic. And slide and up. Good, good. And down. And slide, last one, up, and down. Great job, great job. Good in here, well done. Just keeping the chairs right where they're at. The next one is a little bit easier, okay? Remember, you always wanna keep your knees slightly bent. We're gonna take our left leg, so we'll be standing on the right. We're gonna go out with the left leg. Now, I'm not too far, right? I don't wanna have any lateral flexion in the spine. So I don't want my leg to go out and my body to lean this way, right? I want to stay nice and neutral. I'm going to go out with my leg. I'm going to go forwards, backwards, middle, start. All right? If you're chewing gum, spit it out. Here we go. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Shift. One. Two, three, four, and five. And what you may notice is that maybe your foot only goes out this far, okay? Here we go. One, two, bend that knee, three, four, and five. Shift, one, two, three, four, Five. Good. Shift. One, two, three. Good. Four and five. Last one. Shift. One, two, three, four and five. Let's rotate. Great job. Shake it out. Yeah, yeah. Shake it out. Same thing. Find your focal point, okay? Find a point in front of you, focus on it, okay? Nice and tall, left knee slightly bent, and let's begin. Shift, lift, good, back, there's four and five. Shift, one, two, three, four, and five. And shift. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Last one. Shift. One, two, three, four, and five. And rest. Good, good, good. Shake it out. Good, good. I made a mess over here this morning. Oh, that's a, oh yeah, that's okay. Wait, I might have something. Maybe another one. We can we can get it. We're almost done. 
All right. So, next, yeah, take a break. Yep, catch your breath, take a break if you need it. So, next thing we'll do, we've got two more exercises, right? We're going to do our inline walking. Okay, and what I want you to do is make sure you stay in contact with the chair. So we'll start behind, right? We'll start with our right foot in front. We'll go one, two, and three, and then we'll go backwards. One, two, and three, okay? So we'll stand. We'll put the chair on the left side. We'll do this one. We only have to do it from one direction. We'll finish with a single balance okay we'll finish with our single leg balance for 60 seconds so just come behind your chair maybe arms length okay and what I want you to do is position your feet so your right foot is in front so your first step your first step is to bring the left foot in front okay and then the right foot again and then the left foot now let's go backwards Nice and slow. Keep your knees slightly bent. Keep your nose forward. That's it. You don't want to lean backwards. Good. And then forward, left, right, left, and now backwards. Left, right, and left. Again. Left. Right, left. It's called a sobriety walk. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's called on the sheet. Sobriety walk. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. One more down and back. Left, right, and left. Find your focal point. And left, right. Oh, that's supposed to be holding on. That's okay. Good, good. That's okay. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to stand on one leg for 60 seconds. All right? One leg for 60 seconds. With our chair on the left side, we'll start balancing, right, with our, with, uh, with our left leg. Okay? So here's what I want to do. Deep breath. Exhale. Shift your weight to your left leg. Bend your knee. Right leg in the air. 60 seconds starts now. Twenty seconds have passed. Good. And you can use one or two fingers. That's it. Good. Twenty seconds to go. Fifteen. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time. Awesome. How'd we do? Good? Good, good. How'd we do? Good. Let's rotate. We see an improvement. Should be seeing improvement from the first time we've done this until today. We should definitely be seeing ourselves getting a little better. All right, here we go. Single leg balance on the right leg this time, okay? Deep breath. Shift to the right foot. Bend your knee. Left foot in the air. Time begins now. Good. Find your focal point. Twenty seconds have passed. Thirty. I was just doing it to look at my watch. 
20 seconds remaining. <laughs> I'm not holding it. 10. Here we go. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time. Good job. Good job. I touched. I touched. I had to touch twice. Good job. Well done. Uh, you should be seeing yourself improve. If not, talk to me. Come see me. Uh, remember, second edition of Balance University is available at mybalanceuniversity.com or here in class. We have copies available. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Remember, check the website. A lot of great resources and checklists available. A lot of great videos. It is a very robust website, okay? You guys have a great weekend. Again, thank you for coming. Remember your homework. Make somebody smile. I'm going to go get home. Oh. I'm going to get some stuff to clean it up. You got it. <laughs> you guys, bye-bye. Have a great bye -bye. day. <laughs> you have any questions, I'm here. All right. Thank you, yes, sir. You bet. Bye -bye. Yeah. Yeah. You too, man. Good job. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's 72. I've got to. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yes, sir. You bet.